buying a dream car for a lot of people is oftentimes exactly that, just a dream. Which is a shame because there's a huge difference between having a dream and having a goal. Now this might be because some people simply don't have the self-belief. They think maybe you need to be a multi, multi-millionaire to buy and own a supercar. Or thirdly, they've just not had someone tell them that it's possible and it's actually extremely realistic. Which is why in this video, I wanna share with you my story around how I ended up buying my dream car at 23 years old. All of the crazy things that happened along the way that led up to that point. And I wanna go through the exact finance agreement for it as well as how I ended up making a small profit from owning the car for seven months which is pretty crazy and so this story starts when I was 16 years old I was in computers class at school I remember it so vividly and we were doing a school project on a specific topic of our choice and I chose cars and so part of the project is we had to research about cars and I came across this video from Richard Hammond of Top Gear introducing what was at the time the new Lamborghini Aventador and it's the closest thing to a stealth fighter jet that you'll ever see on the road. And I watched that video and it was at that point that I was just absolutely blown away. But what was very powerful about that experience is it was at that point I also made the decision in my mind that this is something I want to achieve in my life. And so instead of just dreaming about it, I wrote it down and I made it one of my goals. And like all my goals, I got obsessed to the point where I would watch YouTube video after YouTube video about supercars. I also had this brochure of the Lamborghini Huracan that I would keep in my desk at work. When I would come to London, I would try and go to the showrooms where I could see and feel the cars up close. One year, I even spent some of the money I'd saved up to go to the Geneva Motor Show to see one of the new cars that they'd released. And I also hired one when I was in Marbella one time. I spent, looking back, what was probably a silly amount of money to hire one of these cars for the day. So for the first time, I could actually experience what it feels like to drive a Lamborghini. But the craziest thing I did is on the 12th of December 2014, I went on Twitter and I wrote, my next tweet will be a picture of my Lamborghini. Now maybe some of you guys can relate to this, but oftentimes when I'd set some goals, I'd set these goals with so much certainty that when I'd set that goal in my mind, it was already done. It was just a question of time. Now throughout my property and entrepreneurship journey, there was a lot of ups and downs, success, failures, setbacks. But in 2020, there was a point where I was finally ready. Now at this point, I knew exactly what spec of the car I was after. It was a Lamborghini Huracan Performante, which is kind of the track race car variant of the normal Huracan. And the color that I absolutely loved was this incredible bright blue called Blue Cephas. Now this is where the story gets interesting. I spoke to a friend of mine at the dealership and he informed me there was actually only four cars in the UK in that color and only two of which were actually the coupes the other two being the convertible version. And so whether this was the law of attraction or something else, I don't know what, but one morning I woke up, I went onto Instagram, I went onto the explore page and I saw a photo of the car I wanted in that blue Cephas color. And I clicked onto the photo, I clicked onto the profile and the profile was called Smurf Perf. Smurf referring to the blue color, Perf referring to the Performante. And this account only had maybe three, four, 500 followers. And so I messaged the account and I asked him, I don't suppose you're thinking of selling the Performante. And what do you know, he replies back and says he's actually considering selling it because he wants to upgrade to another car. And so we jumped on the phone, had a quick phone call, a few back and forths, and 24 hours later, we'd agreed on a price and I went down to see the car for the first time. And it was the one, it was the exact specification that I wanted. It had the red leather stitching inside, it had the red brake calipers, had beautiful carbon fiber all around it and had the comfort seats as well. And in these cars, you can either have the carbon seats, which is literally just a layer of carbon, which is a backbreaker, or you've got the comfort seats, which are still incredibly uncomfortable. And so on the 9th of July, 2020, I went and picked up my dream car from the dealership. And of course it was a great day, but what's most powerful about these experiences is not picking up the car, it's not the car itself, it's the fact that I've set a goal years prior and every day I work towards that goal. Being able to prove to yourself that if you set a goal, no matter how big and you work towards that goal every single day, 
it will happen and you can achieve it. And that is a very, very empowering experience. And that's why setting goals are extremely important. Now the car itself was everything I'd ever dreamed of. The noise the car made was just beautiful. It was a theatrical experience everywhere you went. The color turned heads like nothing I'd ever seen before. And I just drove it like crazy all summer long. Now the question I wanna answer in this video is, you know, what do these cars actually cost to own? And how did I somehow make a profit from owning this car. So I'm going to break down the numbers in a second, but in terms of actually making a profit or a return on investment from this car, there are two ways you can do it. Directly, which is just buying at a good price and selling at a good price, which is not always possible in some markets, but in the right market with the right car, it absolutely is. Or the second way to make a return on investment is more indirectly, what I'd call maybe the intangible benefits, the credibility that having a nice car gives you. Because when you meet someone for the first time and they see you've got a nice car, so naturally it's just part of human nature, they're gonna think, oh, he's very successful, he's very good at what he does. It also opens you up to a much more valuable network. As soon as you become a customer of one of these brands, whether it is Lamborghini, Ferrari, Rolls-Royce, Bentley, those dealers are gonna invite you to events that they host where you're going to meet other customers of the same brand. And of course, these customers are also gonna be successful people that might end up being investors in your business, that might end up being good customers of your business, or you might end up just becoming business partners with them, who knows? But I've heard so many amazing stories of people that have met in these environments and ended up making money on a deal that made them a lot more than what they actually paid for the car. And so how much did it actually cost me to buy and own this car? Well, the car itself was a 2018 model. It had just over 8,000 miles on the clock and I paid 166,000 for the car. Now, of course, I didn't actually buy it cash. I chose to finance the car, which is probably a whole other video, but buying a car like that cash isn't always the most financially responsible decision if you know how to invest and allocate money properly. In retrospect, 166,000 was actually a really good price for the car. I think prices are now actually higher than that. But this was the first lockdown. Everyone was kind of scared. No one really knew what was going on with the economy and the volume of car sales was down. So it was a good opportunity to get these cars at a good price. I put down a 10% deposit, which is just over 16,000 pounds. The monthly payments were £2,000 per month. And seven months later, I actually got a message from the dealer asking if I wanted to sell the car because someone had come along and wanted, again, the exact same spec and they offered me £10,000 more than I paid for it. So I thought, you know what? I've had my dream car for the last seven months. I put a lot of miles on it and I've got the opportunity to sell it a profit. Now, I've been totally honest with you guys. I had to pay the dealer a fee for selling the car. I also had to replace the tires at 500 pounds a tire. It also needed a service by that point. So really I got out with just a couple thousand pounds profit, which hey, isn't bad for owning your dream car. And that was that until six months later, the dealer texted me photos of another car, the same car except a convertible in a matte black color, and I couldn't say no. So I'm a huge fan of Batman. I love the Batman films with Christian Bale, and it just reminded me of the Batmobile. Will you be wanting the back pot, sir? Middle of the day, Alfred. Not very subtle. The Lamborghini then. Much more subtle. <laughs> I did the exact same thing again. I bought it and then I sold it for about 10,000 pounds more, which is just crazy. Now I know a lot of people have the goal or dream of owning a nice car. And if you're watching this video, I'm guessing that's you. Interestingly, when I speak to these people, there's two kinds of people. There's those that have the psychology that hopefully maybe one day they might buy one of these cars if they're lucky. And secondly, there's those that have set it as a goal and they're prepared to make it happen and work for it. And my advice to you is that these things are not outside the realm of possibility. These things are achievable, but write it down, make it a goal and reverse engineer how you're going to achieve it and get to work.